By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back once again at the Prosecco Cup in the beautiful Conegliano. And here you can see a really nice picture of the city, just to get an idea where I was at. And we were playing cards right next to the tower in a beautiful little cafe. This picture, by the way, is taken by one of the players that was there, Daniel Brunazzo. Thank you so much for this lovely picture, man. And uh, next time I'm going to stay where you were staying because that view is gorgeous. Um, but like I was saying, we have reached the finals of this event. We are playing Atlantic, and that means uh, that we have uh, Fallen Empires in here as well. Maybe when I announce, or before I announce the, uh, the players, maybe it's nice to first have a little bit of Italian romance romantic music. I know it's a little bit cheesy, but this is kind of to give you an idea about how I felt while I was walking around and drinking the vino and, to, you know, sharing my Italian with everybody, mezzo sale and stuff like that. I was, it was quite good. The Italians were pretty impressed. At a certain point in this journey, I was explaining to Italians how to speak Italian. That's how good I was. But anyway, enough about me. Let's focus on the uh, finalists here. We've got Mono Black, and on Mono Black we have Giovanni Favetta. He's on Mono Black, and he's taking on a mid-range control brew, uh, which is actually it's, it's Blue White Flyers, and that's piloted by Vittorio Dal Santo. Oh man, I'm really enjoying this. Maybe I'm enjoying this music a little bit too much. I know it's super cheesy, but I like it. Anyway, before I continue with this video, first a quick message from our sponsors, and then we are going to jump into the deck decks. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old-school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. And we are back, so we're about to dive into the deck tech section now. I know that some people prefer to first go to the match, check out the deck techs later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the timestamps in the description below. So just take a look there, they will find the timestamp named MTG Games. If you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Because yes, we do have our very own Patreon page. So if you want to support the show, if you want to support the content that I make, if you're enjoying it, please consider becoming a patron. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the info. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck text. I'm going to start with the player on the left, Mono Black by Giovanni Vavetta. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Giovanni, so it is mono black, and there are things I like about this deck, and there are things that I'm scared of, and there are things I hate about this deck, but this is, of course, the type of deck, I mean, you expect to see in a format that allows uh, Fallen Empires, because when you allow Fallen Empires, him to Turek, I mean, it's so tempting to start playing that card, because it's just so good, and when you play him, and you got Mind Twist, and you've got Hypnotic Spectres, then it's really easy to start thinking, shouldn't I play a direct? And before you know it, you've got a direct deck. And what I like about this deck of Giovanni is that it's very budget friendly and it made it all, all the way to the finals and it's playing to the wreck. So he's doing something else than not just playing the wreck in this card. That is, of course, one of the tastes that he has in his deck, but he's also very aggressive, right? I mean, he's playing with um, juggernauts in this deck. He's playing with the full play set of Dark Rituals, where you see a lot of people recently in, you know, at the Dutch tournaments where I've been, kind of playing with three Dark Rituals or two Dark Rituals, some people even not playing with Dark Rituals at all in certain mono black brews. Here we see the four Dark Rituals are back and it kind of shows the intention that he has with this deck, right? He wants to maybe and play a him and play a creature at turn two, not just, not just play to him, you know? He wants to get a turn one um, Underworld Dreams on the board. I wonder if he's going to go for turn one if not Expector, you know, especially against the, the Blue-White Flyers deck that he's playing against, because then you could be setting you up for a two-for-one. On the other hand, if he doesn't have the answer to your Hypnotic, you're in a really good position. So I'm really curious to see how Giovanni is going to pilot this. And I do think that the card that could be really good in this matchup is Order of the Ebon Hand, because Order of the Ebon Hand, of course, is a really good pump knight. So again, it works together quite well with that Dark Ritual boost as well, you know. 
Um, but more importantly, it's got protection from white, meaning Swords to Plowshares, the number one instant creature removal of the format, cannot be used against this creature. I mean, that could be massive in here. Another thing I like about this deck is, you know, he's playing with the Hymns, but he's also playing with the Sinkholes, of course. Not a really good card to kind of slow your opponent down. And also to get rid of Mazes of If that could, for example, stop your Juggernauts, right? The Juggernaut doesn't like that kind of stuff. So with your Maze, um, sorry, with your uh, Sinkhole, you can take care of the Maze of If. And uh, he's also playing with three Paralyzes. I always like it when you got Paralyzed, Aggressive Creatures, and some Land Removal, right? Because the Aggressive Creatures and the Land Removal make your Paralyze a lot better. Also, Land Removal, of course, with a discard strategy work really well. Why? Well... If your opponent doesn't have lands to play anything out, it means you're, he or she is going to keep those cards in hand. And I mean, then you're going to get punished for it because you know as a black player, I will probably run into or draw into a couple of hymns. I will get my mind twist. Maybe I've got a hippie active. So it's just going to get like worse and worse and worse. This is a really tough deck to play against. And, you know, at this tournament, I was playing Eureka myself. These decks, they wrecked me. They went way too fast. And also, you know, more importantly, they attacked my hand. So at the time, I had a lot of moments, well, a lot, but a few moments where I had a Eureka in hand, but all the stuff that I wanted to play out with Eureka were already discarded by the hymns and by the hippies. So it's it's just, you know, it's tough to play against these decks. And I guess what I like about them is the fact that they're so budget friendly. So even if you've got like a small budget as an old school Magic player, you can easily make this, go to an Atlantic tournament and, and actually have a chance to make it all the way to the finals and maybe even win it because that's exactly the position that Giovanni is in today. Um, by the way, a quick glance at his sideboard. I think the terrors are going to be quite good. Um, I'm wondering if you would play the Glooms. I'm sure he's going to board them in because, again, Gloom is also quite good with your land removal strategy with the sinkholes. But personally, I'm not really a big fan of Gloom. I've just seen it kind of do nothing in a lot of matches, especially against control decks where they're like, okay, it's it, it's a bit annoying and it means it's going to cost me some more mana and take me some more time before I can kind of build out. But I'm a control deck. I don't really care about that. On the other hand, I can see again how good it can be. A Gloom can kind of make it so that your opponent cannot play that quick swords on the creatures that you've got on, on the board, right? So that you can keep pushing through with your damage. So it could have its value, but I'm just saying in general, I'm not really, you know, impressed by Gloom, but but maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I'm hardly like a mono black specialist and Giovanni, you made it to the final. So I'm just, in other words, I'm really curious to see, are you going to board it in? Which I guess you're going to, you're going to, because you're playing against blue white. And then how good is it going to be? Prove me wrong and uh, let Gloom shine. Okay. You can do that, Giovanni. Anyway, this is the deck of the mono black player Giovanni. And now we're going to go to the deck of his opponent, Blue and White Flyers by Vittorio Dal Santo. Let's uh, have a look. And here we see the deck from the other finalist, Vittorio Dal Santo. So this is White Blue Flyers. And this is really the type of deck, right? If you say you're going to play White Blue Flyers, make the deck. This is basically what you would make, right? I never play it, but this is what I would probably also make. Four Surrender Befreeze, four Sarah Angels. That's kind of a no-brainer inclusion. They're just so good. Probably the best flying creatures in the format. Then, of course, you're playing with your white control package. You've got Swords to Plowshares. You've got Disenchants. You've got a balance. You're playing an extra Divine Offering because in this format, Atlantic, you're going to run into a lot of robots decks. So that makes absolute sense. And then you've got four counter spells, your Mana Drain. You've got the Blue Power. And, you know, you're, of course, your Chaos Orb, all the Moxen, all that stuff. The interesting part here of this deck is those little holes that you got to fill, where you got to make those personal choices. For example, that inclusion of Darylor, which I think is really sweet. You're splashing black anyway for Demonic Tutor and your Mind Twist, so why not add that Darylor? It's just It's such a boss, and it's also kind of saying, okay, we're allowed to play Fallen Empires, so at least I'm going to play one card from Fallen Empires. Um, and of course, I love the Papa Modi in this deck, one of my favorite creatures, 5-6 Flyer for 6. Um, the Trike, which I think is so good against so many decks. There were a lot of like small to the ground weenie decks here in this uh, in this um, tournament, and, and Trikes are just so good against those type of decks. And I think today the Trike could shine if it, for example, run, runs into an Order of the Ebon Hand. It's so nice to get rid of it with your Triskelion, so that's really good. Um, we also see a Psionic Blast, and we see a Psychic Purge there as well. This one blue to cast, and the cool thing about this card, a card from Legends, it deals one damage to any target, so it can get rid of, of an Order of the Evan Hand, right? Because it's pro-white, not pro-blue. 
And if if you're forced to discard this card, your opponent takes five damage. And that's just I'm hoping to see that. That's just gonna be a lot of fun. He's only playing a one-off, but I like it. And those are actually the elements of this deck that I really like. Those that psychic purge, the Darylor, the Modi, like those those little one-offs where you can see those those personal choices that he has made. That that always makes a deck for me for me more interesting. Uh, to look at them when we're looking at the sideboard we see two modes there in the sideboard that could be an interesting inclusion i wonder if he's going to port those in of course they're not going to save you against hypnotic specters or the same gears but um, his opponent today has a lot of low to the ground creatures so that could be quite good i also wonder if he's going to board in the second triskelion to battle those orders of the ebon hand so yeah this is a really strong deck but so is the mono black deck so when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking 50-50. I mean, yes, the, the, the blue-white deck definitely has stronger cards. Of course, all the power. Um, so if if he draws the nuts, he's definitely going to win, I think. But on the other hand, don't er underestimate Mono Black. I mean, he's got the discard. If he has the Dark Rituals, if he has like an early quick start, attacks the hand from the get-go. I mean, it's Trouble Town. Um, so yeah, I mean, in, in my opinion here, this finals, it's everybody's game. So despite the fact that this deck is fully powered and his opponent's deck doesn't have any power, I don't think it matters that much here. You know, that mono black strategy doesn't really need that, that power stuff anyway. So I really think here it's kind of a 50, 50. Let me know in the comments below who your favorite is, the mono black player or the blue white, the flyers player. I would love to hear from you and let me know why you think like one deck is better than the other deck. Um, I'd love to hear from you, you know, I mean, do you think I'm babbling or do you think that what I'm saying is making any sense at all? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. But now we have talked about both of the decks and that only means one thing. We are ready to go to the finals of the Prosecco Cup 2024 uh, between Giovanni and Vittorio. Let's go. Game number one of the finals of the Prosecco Cup and the player on the right is here on the play Vittorio with his blue white flyers deck and on the left we have Giovanni with his mono black deck so it's really the mono black budget brew here playing against that fully powered blue white flyers deck of Vittorio and here we see a strip mine on that underground seat and there's another duel that's a tundra here so a tundra and a mox jet sorry a mox pearl of course and there's the pass turn to Giovanni so Giovanni playing under power there's a swamp and a pass so no uh, Dark Ritual into something else. And Vittorio here playing a Serenip Afrit, a 3-4 flyer from Arabian Nights. And I wonder if Giovanni is going to play him to Turek here, if he can find another Swamp, perhaps. Of course, uh, his opponent doesn't have two blue to counter, but look at this, going to play a Paralyze instead, and also playing that Mishra's Factory. Passing the turn and Paralyze just works really well on the Serenip, actually, because look at that, he's still taking damage. But if he wants to untap it, he has to invest four mana. I mean, you really don't want to do that. I mean, it's not even an option now. Perhaps if he has a land drop, he could do that next turn. He does have kind of an attack available with the factory. So he could go in for two. But then, of course, next turn, Giovanni could attack for two as well. He is tapping three here. What are we going to see? There's another surrender hitting the board. What if, what if Giovanni has another Paralyze? right that would be an absolute killer so keeping one planes open here passing the turn what are we going to see from the mono black player there's another swamp so three lands here in total are we going to see him are we going to see another paralyzed are we going to see maybe hypnotic specter like there are a lot of options right now here for giovanni taking his time of course being here in the finals after playing cards the whole day. There's an Hypnotic Spectre hitting the board. And that's not the worst. I wonder now if he's going to untap the Surrender, but it looks like he doesn't. He's just going to take the damage, drop to 17, and draw a card for turn. And then the next question is, okay, there's a Library of Alexandria, but only three cards in hand, though. The next question is, is he going to attack? There's your answer. He is going to attack. Does that mean that he's got another flyer? Perhaps a Sarah Angel. Yep, that's the Sarah Angel hitting the board. And I think it's really important for the Mono Black player here to have an answer to that Sarah. Because remember, the Sarah doesn't have to tap when attacking. That makes it such a good card. The 4-4 flyer. One of the best creatures in the game. Together, actually, with Surrender Pafrit and Hypnotic Spectre. 
Let's see what he's going to do. I mean, another Paralyze would kind of be okay here. We do see an Order of the Ebon Hand there as well. The 2-1 Pump Knight with protection from white. It's a little bit too slow, I think. There's another Hypnotic Spectre. Ah, it's not great. Passing the turn here. I now really wonder what's going to happen in the next uh, combat step. But first, untap, upkeep, and then draw. And of course, taking two damage, going down to 15. There's the attack for seven. Are we going to see a double block here? Could put both his hippies in front of the angel, but I mean, is that a good trade? If he takes seven, he would drop to 10 here. It's on 17 at the moment. Going through his hand, thinking about the options. And is going to double block here. So he's going to take three. Going to drop to 14. Another Sarah Angel. Wow, yeah, this is, this is really, really tough for Giovanni. That other Sarah Angel is, is really going to make it difficult for him here to, to win this one. Still, he's on 14 at the moment. Playing... The 1-1 one, one here from Fallen Empires. <laughs> Tapping two more. What are we going to see? There's the Order of the Ebon Hand. And I wonder if he can actually play this out. Oh, of course, he can filter the colorless mana to make it a black mana. Yeah, of course. So that makes sense to play this out. So he's got this 1-1 one, one and this 2-1. And I mean, his board is looking very, very weak if we're looking uh, at the board of his opponent here. He's going to take two more points of damage. So it looks like he's now... Going to drop to 10, perhaps, or did he already take the damage? Went down to uh, 12. Kind of missed that point. Look at that. He's going to untap the Surrendip. Yeah, he can swing in for 10 here. I mean, that's huge. Remember, this is game number one, so we still have a whole match to go. There's the attack, full swing. Coming in there for 10 points of damage. And I don't think there's a lot here that Giovanni can do. Dropping to 4. I mean, this is massive. There's the attack. Oh, sorry, there's the uh, pass turn. Another swamp. And it looks like the control player has this. Yes, he does. Mono black player picking up the cards. And the victory is going to the uh, blue white flyers deck. But remember, this is just game number one. Players are now going to dive into their sideboards. And we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So one game up here for our blue-white Flyers player, Vittorio. And Giovanni has to win this to, uh, to stay in it. They're in the finals, of course. Whoever wins this is the champion of the Prosecco Cup 2024. Here we see a Mox Emerald and a Tundra from Vittorio. Let's see what Giovanni can do. There's the second black that he needs for a potential him to Turek. We didn't see a single him in that first game, I think. Him is really going to be, or could be, a key card in this matchup. There is, ooh, a Dark Ritual. What is he going to do with four mana? There's a Mind Twist for three. Yeah, basically a better him here with that Mind Twist for three. And I think what makes him to Turek and Mind Twist just so good is, you know, that the, the, the discarding happens at random. Two counter spells gone and an Island gone. So it could have been worse here for Vittorio. I mean, perhaps he's keeping his Surrendip, but it looks like uh, he doesn't have any hand, though, passing the turn. There is a Mishra's Factory. There's the Tap of the Urborg. Another Dark Ritual. Wow, so a very quick hand here. There's the Sengir Vampire. Are we going to see a Swords to Plowshares? We know the counter spells are gone, of course, for Vittorio, losing two when uh, Giovanni casted that Mind Twist earlier. There's a Balance, though. This is not too bad. This balance is quite nice from Vittorio. Really gets him back into it. Giovanni losing a land here. Vittorio does have to discard a card. So Giovanni losing a land and a creature, which is quite good. And losing a City of Brass. So two cards still in hand, passing the turn. Also two cards for Giovanni. So it's still everybody's game here. I wonder if he's going to swing in for two. There's your answer. Animating, swinging in. Vittorio taking the first damage of game number two, dropping to 18. There is a Maze of If and a Pass. Maze, of course, really good against Surrendip. There's just a pass turn, nothing from Vittorio. 
And the thing is with the mace, I mean, you could say, why not wait with playing it out? Here we see him to Turek. Because Mace is so good. There's a counter spell though, because Mace is so good once that Surrendip is on the board. And of course, Vittorio is not going to play out the Surrendip now, knowing that the Mace is there. First, want to find a solution for that. Or, of course, his strategy could be to play out two creatures, you know, to at least get damage in. Here we see a Hypnotic Spectre. Wow, this is pretty big. Counter spell used earlier on that him to Turek. So, three counter spells now in the bin for Vittorio. We haven't seen. Oh, there's Greater Realm of Preservation coming in from the sideboard. The problem with Greater Realm is you've got to pay two to prevent the damage. He only has one mana open, so he is going to lose a card here. And uh, what I wanted to say is we haven't seen a single Sword to Plowshares yet. There's the animate, there's the attack. He's just going to take the damage and lose a card. This is pretty bad for Vittorio. Also, after that Mind Twist, again, losing a card here in this game. Brain Geyser, oh, that is painful on the long run. That could have been a really good card to kind of get back into it. Get that card advantage going. I think if you're Vittorio now, you're really hoping for that Ancestral Recall. There's the pass. Now he does have enough mana to prevent the damage with his Greater Realm of Preservation. So that's uh, the silver lining here for him. Ooh, lots of glare here. Hard to see. Yep, there's a Mishra's Factory. And of course, he can pump it. He's just going to go for it. And of course, he cannot prevent the damage from the Mishra's because that's colorless. So he is going to take three here. Going to drop to 11, so he's still under pressure. And I'm also liking this attack here by Giovanni with the Hippie, because why not? Let him let him tap the mana for him. Let him, let him try it, you know? And now he's going to animate both. Attack here for 6. Of course, Hippie damage prevented, still taking 4. So he's going to drop to 7, I believe. Was on 11. Look at that. Now it's going quite quick. So these Mistress Factories are really doing a lot here. Big problem for Vittorio and just passing the turn. I'm hoping for him that he's got a disenchant or at least a uh, swords in hand or something to get rid of uh, some of those factories. It looks like he's only going to animate one, attacking with two here. Again, preventing, taking the damage, dropping to five. So I'm expecting him to cast something here. There's the swamp. Tapping three. There's another hypnotic specter. Passing the turn, so interesting choosing to keep one black open. Or maybe he miscalculated, so he could have done one more point of damage. There's a Sarah Angel hitting the board. Could come here right on time. Vittorio on five. I think if he attacks with everything, actually, he's got it. Vittorio's tapped out, so if he just animates both of the factories, gets in there for eight, Vittorio can only block one. Is this one one? Is it gonna be one one? Yes, it is 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one here. Vittorio, of course, not having an answer to that attack. Could only block one and take six. And he was on five. So it is 1-1. One, one. Very quick games, but I'm loving it. And we're now going to go to the all deciding game number three. Game number three of the Prosecco Cup Finals 2024. This is the big decider. Is it going to be Giovanni who wins the cup or is it going to be Vittorio? It is 1-1 between these two players. I'm, I mean, this is a nail-biting finals. We see Giovanni, by the way, taking a mulligan here. Vittorio, of course, being on the play because uh, he lost that second game. So that's a little bit of a silver lining for Vittorio here. He is the player who's on blue-white flyers, fully powered deck, taking on Giovanni, who's on mono black with those scary cards like the him, like the mind twist, like the hippie. Also two wrecks in there. And on Underworld Dreams, a lot of stuff happening in his uh, mono black deck. And, uh, you know, I can, I, can, I can see him win. Why not? But this is, of course, a bit problematic for Giovanni. Only starting with six cards and he's on the draw. I mean, his deck is much better on the play in this matchup. Vittorio here playing a Tundra. For example, if Vittorio can get a second blue and counter magic up, that's already a pretty good position for him to be in. We see Giovanni here just playing the Swamp. No Dark Ritual. That's something we did see in that uh, second game that he won. Here's the Underground Sea. So this is kind of the scenario that I uh, was talking about. Now Vittorio has the counter magic open. So if we're going to see him here, we don't. We see an Order of the Evan Hand. Are we going to see a counter spell? That is the question. Or when you're Vittorio, do you think, you know what? I'm going to keep my counter magic for the discard spells. Of course, he can play a Serenib and block the Order. If he does, though, it looks like he does. It's going to tap out. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have any magic, or sorry, any magic, any mana to, uh, to of course, counter a potential him to Turek from Giovanni. So it's going to be an interesting moment here for uh, for the mono black player. It has an opening here to play some of those discard spells, but of course you have to have it. 
Gonna play a Mishra's Factory, so two black and a one colorless mana available at the moment. Gonna tap two. Oh, look at this, a sinkhole. Playing with four sinkholes as well, taking care of the Tundra. And there's a single damage here for Fitorio. So it's three, four surrender, of course, deals one damage during your upkeep. Here we see a basic planes. I wonder, yeah, he's gonna attack. I wanna say, I wonder if he's gonna attack, but there's your answer, he is going to attack. There's the pass. So Giovanni, of course, playing with uh, four Surrender Pafrits and four Sarah Angels, one Mahamoti Jin, which I really like. Also playing with the Trike, by the way. Trike being quite good, of course, against the Pump Knights. Here we see the Order of the Ebon Hand getting into the red zone. Vittorio dropping to 17. Oh, and there's a him. And again, no double blue anymore for Vittorio because of that sinkhole earlier. So, I mean, the counter magic is just really, really bad so far for Vittorio. He's going to lose two Sarah Angels. Oh my, I wonder what the rest of his hand is. Three cards left. Gonna take another damage. Gonna draw card number four. He's on 16. Yeah, and I mean, the mono black deck, it's its just brutal, you know? It's so good with those him to Turex. And also, of course, the order of the Evan hand is so good. He is taking an extra turn here, Vittorio, with a time walk. Doesn't mean an extra damage, but of course, an extra hit with the Surrendip as well. And that's basically all he's got at the moment. That Surrendip of Freed going for him. That's his only plan. Missing two land drops now in a row. I mean, that Sinkle is proving to be really, really good. Look at that, just passing the turn here. Oh, Vittorio, you need to start playing out lands. There's another Swamp here for Giovanni. An attacker could start pumping it as well. Or will it just be two points of damage? Of course, can play pay a double black to give it a plus one, plus O, oh, and one black to give it first strike. That's probably why Vittorio doesn't want to block it with his Mishra's Factory. He doesn't want to lose any more mana. Only has three available as is. Here we see uh, a Nevenerals Disc. I think that's not that concerning. We do see a Disenchant, but I mean, that is not the problem here for Vittorio. The problem is he first needs to get some lands, right? And I mean, if he can cast a Sarah, he's actually fine. But I mean, he only has four mana now. And of course, he lost two Sarahs to him earlier. There's another Mishra's Factory here hitting the board. I wonder if he's considering maybe blocking the order. It's so hard with the Pump Knight, right? Because like I said, for two black plus one plus oh, for one black first strike. So with the mana he's got, he can actually make it into a four one first striker, meaning that you cannot even kill it with your uh, with your factory, even if you want to. You can make the factory now a four four because it can pump itself and you can pump it with the other factory. So it's gonna be quite tough. Could also consider double blocking. Since Giovanni can only make it a 4-1 for a striker, so that means he would lose a factory, but he would uh, also kill, of course, the Order of the Abbot Hand. The problem is he's already low on mana. Just pumping it for one year, so three damage to Vittorio. There's another Order of the Ebon Hand. Oh, man. This is looking really bad for Vittorio. He's going to untap, take another damage from his own Serenity. He's on eight now. Both players on eight, by the way. So it's really a race here. I mean, I think if you're Vittorio, you have to keep your Surrender Befreed at home, but that's going to hurt because even if you block, it's just going to pump the order. I mean, this is really tough. I mean, if you attack, you put him on five. That's a, that's a line he's going to go for. Going to put Giovanni on five. But I mean, this is super risky. If he doesn't have a follow-up play... I wonder what choices he's making. Of course, we don't know what cards are in his hand. I believe four cards there in his hand. Only one for Giovanni. Vittorio on eight, Giovanni on five. Okay, here is a balance. Does mean that he's basically discarding two cards from his own hand, but he is then taking care of one of the orders. So that's really good news for him. So one of the orders dies here. And there's the past turn. Okay, this is going to be a very interesting turn for Giovanni. Ooh, throwing away his Jam Day Tome there in his Tundra. Of course, the Tome being quite too slow, but that land kind of hurts. I wonder what that final card is in hand. He is going to swing in here, and are we going to see a block? Or is he just going to take the damage? He is on 8, of course. 
So he could choose just to take two. Of course, Giovanni can make it a 3-1 by pumping it. Then he would drop to five. I mean, this is exciting stuff. There is, ooh, Dark Ritual. What does this mean? Tapping one black, three black in the pool. So four black in total. Okay, he's going to pump, of course, his uh, Order of the Ebon Hand. Ooh, going to put him on four here. So he's going to use a Dark Ritual here to pump the Order, putting Vittorio on four. For a moment there, I thought it was doing it in his second main. He was going to play something out. Now he's going to take an extra point of damage. And then he's going to play the Terror. Well-timed. Ooh, and look at that. Vittorio can attack him for four, but that's not enough. He can put him on one here, but it's not enough. And if he does, he's, of course, going to gonna die next turn. So it's not even an option. Needs to find a way to squeeze in an extra point of damage. If he has another Mishra's factory in hand here, he can play the factory, animate both his factories, use the other factory to pump, dealing five damage exactly. He could kill Giovanni, win the Prosecco Cup. But if he doesn't have that one factory, which he probably doesn't, or else he would have slammed it on the table, he just has to pass the turn and probably has to start blocking the order of the Ebon Hand, and that's going to be very painful. Two cards in hand, and you can see Vittoria, they're tapping the table, trying to look for a line, but I don't think there is a line. Passing the turn here to Giovanni, and I think if you're Giovanni, you're just going to put that order of the Ebon Hand, turn it sideways, knowing that Vittorio has to block it. I mean, but on the other hand, you can only pump your order for two black, make it a 3-1 first striker. And then actually Vittorio can block it pretty safely with one of the factories, because the factory can tap to make itself a 3-3, and then you can use the other factory to make it into a 4-4, meaning he can kill the order of the Ebon Hand. So it's also for Giovanni a really difficult situation where he's in tapping to... Oh, this sinkhole changes a lot. A sinkhole here, probably on the factory, right? Tapping three. Oh, look at that holy light. That gives a minus one, minus one to all non-white creatures. Oh, look at that. Killing the order of the Evan Hand. That is brilliant. But now Giovanni can at least swing in for two. I mean, do you want to? And yes, he does, it seems. He's going to swing in for two. What a match this is. The deciding game number three. Holy light taking care of the order. Then the swing. Vittorio is on one. Both players just having a factory. That's it. I mean, if Giovanni draws into a sinkhole, it's done. Passing the turn here back. Oh, and remember, Giovanni is also playing with Underworld Dreams. I mean, this is super risky. There's another order of the Ebon Hand. And a pass. Oh, is this going to be the end of the road? You can see Vittorio laughing there, but he needs a solution now. City of Brazo, that's why he's laughing. That's, of course, a card he cannot use if you tap it for mana. You take a damage passing the turn. And Giovanni can now attack with both creatures to, to maybe win the game. Are we going to see a disenchant here? That's the question. Dark Ritual first. There's a him to Turek. Oh, this is tough. He's going to lose two cards. What is he going to lose? Sarah Angel Darylor. One card in hand. Is this a disenchant? It has to be a disenchant. He's going to use that uh, mana left to animate the factory. There it is. That's it. Giovanni here winning the Processo Cup 2024. Congratulations, my man. What we need now is pizza music. So congratulations here. You can see a picture of both of the players. So Giovanni, congratulations on winning. And of course, you know, um, you had a great run here. I believe this was your first old school tournament and you're winning it straight away. That is pretty impressive. And I'm also a little jealous. I'm going to be honest. But uh, well, well done. And of course, also to Vittorio here for making it all the way to the finals with your blue-white Flyers deck here. You can see some people starting to uh, congratulate you with this great victory. And also, uh, I would like just like to thank the hosts of this tournament, the Venetia Lions, and especially Enrico. Enrico, it was great to meet you in person. Finally, you've been one of the earliest supporters of Timmy Talk. So thank you so much for always supporting the channel, also as a patron, but also just as a viewer. Thank you so much. It was great to meet you, meet all of you actually. And uh, I am looking forward to coming back in 2025 because yes, I will. And actually, if you cannot get enough of the Prosecco Cup, I have really good news for you because next week I am back with more action from the Prosecco Cup, but then from the day two tournament that we played. But more about that next week for now thank you very much for watching and before you go please consider leaving a like sharing this on your socials and leave a comment all these things are free and really help the channel move forward for now
Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Ik het is, ik het is, somber gezien.